four of Black Adder. Yes. Black Adder goes fourth. We are told this is set in World War One. Yeah. yeah. This is where the first clip came from that we started the Black yes. Adder journey from is how World War One began. Yes, poor ostrich. Died for nothing. So let's just dive in. This one is called Captain Cook. Captain Cook. <laughs> I'm carving something on this bullet, sir. What are you carving? I'm carving Baldrick, sir. <laughs> it's a cunning plan, actually. Of course it is. <laughs> See, you may say that somewhere there's a bullet with your name on it. Well, I thought if I owned the bullet with my name on it, I'd never get hit by it. <laughs> I won't ever shoot myself. No, shame. Chances of there being two bullets with my name on them are very small indeed. It's not the only thing around here that's very small indeed. <laughs> that's genius. Love it. You man. gotta love it. There's a bullet with your name on it. Is that something you were brought up knowing, or? Uh, uh, it's just one of those things. I guess you know it. All right. It's a superstition kind of thing, I guess. It. There you go. Oh. Your brain, for example, <laughs> is so minute, Baldrick, that if a hungry cannibal cracked your head open, there wouldn't be enough inside to cover a small water biscuit. Tally ho, bumbana, your uncle. In English, we say good morning. <laughs> Look what I got for you, sir. What? It's the latest issue of King and Country. Oh, damn inspiring stuff. The magazine that tells the Tommies the truth about the war. Or alternatively, the greatest work of fiction since Vows of Fidelity were in <laughs> French marriage service. Oh. So now, you can't deny that this fine newspaper is good for the morale of the men. Certainly not. I just think that more could be achieved by giving them some real toilet paper. <laughs> With you at all, sir, what could any patriotic chap have against this magnificent mag? Apart from his bottom? Look at it. The stuff's about as convincing as Dr. Crippen's defense lawyer. <laughs> the British Tommies are all portrayed as six foot six with biceps the size of Bournemouth. <laughs> Thoroughly inspiring stuff. And now look, sir, this also just arrived for you this morning. Do you know what this is, Lieutenant? Oh, it's a good old service revolver. Wrong. It's a brand new service revolver, which I've <laughs> suspiciously been sent without asking for it. I smell something fishy, and I'm not talking about the contents of Baldrick's apple crumble. <laughs> it's funny, sir, because we didn't order those new trench-climbing ladders, either. New ladders? No, it came yesterday. I issued them to the men, and they were absolutely thrilled. Isn't that right, men? Yes, sir. First solid fuel we've had since we burned the cat. Something's <laughs> going on, and I think I can make an educated guess what it is. Something with you, George, would find hard to do. True. Where I was at school, education could go hang as long as a boy could hit a six, sing the school song very loud, and take a hot trumpet from behind without blubbing. <laughs> I, on the other hand, am a fully rounded human being with a degree from the University of Life, a diploma from the School of Hard Knocks, and three gold stars from the kindergarten of getting the shit kicked out of me. <laughs> Stinks lead me to deduce that we are at last about to go over the top. Great Scott, are you in finally a to give... Harry Hun, a darn good dial thrashing, six of the best, trousers down. Are we all going to get killed? Yes. <laughs> Field Marshal Haig is about to make yet another gargantuan effort to move his drinks cabinet six inches closer to Berlin. <laughs> Bravo, Wissimo. Well, let's make a start, eh? Up and over to glory. Last one in Berlin's a rotten egg. Give me your helmet, Lieutenant. Yes. Some sort of clever hat camouflage might be in order. <laughs> Mission to speak, sir. Granted, with a due sense of exhaustion and dread. I have a cunning plan to get us out of getting killed, sir. Oh, yes. What is it? Cooking. <laughs> I see. Those staff HQ's always on the lookout for good cooks. Well, we go over there, we cook them something, and we get out of the trenches that way. Baldrick, it's a brilliant plan. Is it? Yes, it's superb. <laughs> Permission to write home immediately, sir. This is the first brilliant plan a Baldrick's ever had. For centuries we've tried, and they've always turned out to be total pig swill. He is pleased as Punch. Hmm. If only she were as good-looking as Punch Baldrick. <laughs> there is, however, one slight flaw in the plan. Oh. You're the worst cook in the entire world. <laughs> oh, yes, right. There are amoeba on Saturn who could boil a better egg than you. Your filet mignon in sauce bernays look like dog turds in blue. Oh. That's because they are. Duff tastes like it's a molehill decorated with rabbit droppings. <laughs> Or you wouldn't notice. Your cream custard has the texture of cat vomit. Uh. Again, it's... Uh... If you were to serve a, one of your meals in Staff HQ, you'd be arrested for the greatest mass poisoning since Lucretia Borgia invited 500 of her close friends round for a wine and anthrax party. <laughs> now we'll have to think of a better plan than that. Right, how about a nice meal while you chew it over? What's on the menu? Rat. 
Saute or fricassee? Oh, the agony of choice. <laughs> Saute it involves? Well, you take the freshly shaved rat and you marinate it in a puddle for a while. For how long? Till it's drowned under a hot light bulb. Then you get within dashing distance of a latrine and you scoff it right down. <laughs> so that's sauteing and fricasseeing? Exactly the same, just a slightly bigger rat. Call me old Mr. Unadventurous, but I think I'll give it a miss this one. Fair enough, sir. More for the rest of us, eh, sir? Absolutely, Private. Tell Hello, the Savoy Grill. <laughs> no, it's you. Yes, I'll be over in 40 minutes. Who was it then, sir? Strangely enough, Ulrich, it was Pope Gregory the Ninth inviting me for drinks aboard his steam yacht, the Saucy Sioux, currently wintering in Montego <laughs> Bay with the England cricket team and the Balinese goddess of plenty. <laughs> really? No, not really. Thank you. No doubt that idiot General Melchett is about to offer me some attractive new opportunities to have my brains blown out for Britain. What do you want, darling? It's Captain, darling, to you. General Melchett wants to see you about a highly important secret mission. What's going on, darling? Captain Clackadder to see you, sir. Excellent. Just a short back inside there, I think, please. Uh, that's Corporal Black, sir. Captain Blackadder is here about the other matter, sir, the secret matter. Yes, the special mission. At ease, Blackadder. Now, what I'm about to tell you is absolutely tip-top secret. Is that clear? It is, sir. Now, I've compiled a list of those with security clearance. Have you got it, darling? Yes, sir. Read it, please. It's top security, sir. I think that's all the captain needs to know. George Schultz, let's hear the list in full. Very well, sir. List of personnel cleared for Mission Gainsborough, as dictated by General C.H. Melcher. You and me, darling, obviously. Field Marshal Haig, Field Marshals, <laughs> their family servants, tennis partners, and some chap I bumped into in the mess the other day called Bernard. So, it's maximum security. Is that clear? <laughs> Quite clear, sir. Only myself and the rest of the English-speaking world is to know. <laughs> Good man. Now... Field Marshal Haig has formulated a brilliant new tactical plan to ensure final victory in the field. Would this brilliant plan involve us climbing out of our trenches and walking very slowly towards the enemy, sir? <laughs> How could you possibly know that, Blackadder? It's classified. <laughs> it's the same plan we used last time, and the 17 times before that. Exactly! And that is what is so brilliant about it. It will catch the watchful Hun totally off guard. Doing precisely what we've done 18 times before is exactly the last thing they'll expect us to do this time. There is, however, one small problem. That everyone always gets slaughtered in the first 10 seconds. <laughs> That's right. And Field Marshal Haig is worried that this may be depressing the men attack. <laughs> He's looking to find a way to cheer them up. Well, his resignation and suicide would seem the only <laughs> Interesting thought. Make a note of it, darling. Take a look at this. I'm sure you know it. King and Country. Yes, without question, my favourite magazine. Soft, strong and thoroughly absorbent. Well, Black Adam, I thought it would be right up your alley. What do you hmm. think? Genius plan or not? Oh, terrible plan, but I can't help but love everything about this. <laughs> I'm going to love all of this. Oh, yeah. I'm going to love all this fucking thing. Mm -hmm. So I can't, I can't wait you. I don't know if it's a good plan or not. I've never been in that. <laughs> but in school, oh. you learn about World War One, right? Yeah, of course I did. Yeah. Oh, it's te fucking the worst. Yeah, the war to end all wars. But a sequel happened. Yeah. <laughs> Field Marshal Haig's plan: mission a man to do an especially stirring painting for the cover of the next issue, so as to really inspire mm. the men for the final push. What I want you to do, Black Adam, is to labor night and day to find a first-rate artist from amongst your men. Impossible, sir. I know from long experience that my men have all the artistic talent of a cluster of colorblind hedgehogs in a bag. Well, that's a bit of a blur. We needed a man to leave the trenches immediately. Leave the trenches? <laughs> yeah, I wonder if you've been, as I have, sir, that marvelous painting in the National Portrait Gallery, Bag Interior. By the colorblind hedgehog workshop of Siena. I'm sorry, are you saying you can find us a man? I think I can. And might I suggest, sir, that having left the trenches, it might be a good idea to post our man to Paris in order to soak up a little of the artistic atmosphere, perhaps even Tahiti. I don't know. It's a real masterpiece. Yes, yes, but can you find? Now I know I can, sir. Before you can say sunflowers, I'll have Vincent van Gogh standing before you. Ha, 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 ha.
No, no, not so. It's kind of coming. I must wonder whether two socks and a hand grenade is really the sort of thing the covers of King and Country are made of. They will be when I've painted them being shipped <laughs> up the Kaiser's backside. <laughs> ah, this is interesting. What is? Well, Private Baldrick is obviously a bit of an impressionist. The only decent impression he can do is of a man with no talent. Vomiting Cavalier. No, sir. That's not supposed to be vomit. It's dabs of light. No, it's vomit. So uh, why did you choose that? You told me to, sir. Did I? Yeah, you told me to paint whatever comes from within. So I did my breakfast. <laughs> What do you paint what, from whatever whatever comes? Oh. It's like the one episode of Morning of Life where I can't uh, forget that one. Unfortunately. Oh, tomato. <laughs> if only I'd paid attention in nursery art class instead of spending my entire time manufacturing papier mâché willies to frighten Sarah Wallace. <laughs> Honey, but painting was the only thing I was ever any good at. Well, it's a pity you didn't keep it up. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I did actually. I mean, I mean, I was like orbs really, but you know, I, they give me pleasure. I to show them to you now, as, as, as it happens, but there you go. For what they're worth, I have my hands cut off. I mean, wow. George, these are brilliant. Why didn't you tell us about these before? Well, you know, doesn't like to blow one's own trumpet. You had a trumpet? These paintings could spell my way out of the trenches. Yours? I right, ours. All we have to do is paint something heroic to appeal to the simple-minded Tommy. Over to you, Baldrick. <laughs> um, about a noble Tommy's horror and disgust over the body of a murdered nun was being brutally done over by a nasty old German. Excellent. I can see it now. The nun and the hum. George, <laughs> set up your equal. I will pose. This is going to be art's greatest moment since Mona Lisa sat down and told Leonardo da Vinci she was in a slightly odd mood. You lie down in the mud and be the nun. I'm not lying down there. It's all wet. Well, let's put it this way. Either you lie down and get wet or you're knocked down and get a broken nose. <laughs> Actually, it's not that wet, is it? No. Yeah. Who are you going to be then, Tommy? Precisely. Standing over the body of the ravaged nun. I want a wimple. Well, you should have gone before we started the picture. The funny thing is, my father was a nun. No. What? No, he wasn't. He was so, sir. I know, because whenever he was up in court and the judge used to say occupation, he'd say nun. I <laughs> love that. Oh, oh man. God. He was a nun. Oh, Dude, that's about us right now. We go by yeah. the Dodge to say None. occupation. None. We're nuns. Gotta oh, love it. Oh, God. Right, you ready? Oh, uh, just about, sir. Yes. Um, you just like to pop a stool. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry? Just pop your clothes on the stool over there. You mean, you want me tackle out? Yes. <laughs> if I can remind you of the realities of battle, George, one of the first things that everyone notices is that all the protagonists have got their clothes on. Pardon, favour fighting our battles au naturel. It's, it's artistic license. It's, it's disbelief. Well, I'm not having anyone staring in disbelief at my willy suspension. <laughs> Get on and paint the bloody thing sharpish. Brilliant, George. It's a masterpiece. The wimple suits you, Bullrick. But it completely covers my face. Exactly. General Melton will be here at any moment. When he arrives, leave the talking to me, all right? I like to keep an informal trench, as you know, but today you must only speak with my express permission. Is that clear? <laughs> permission to speak? Yes. <laughs> At ease. Now then, Blackadder, where would you like me to sit? I thought just a simple trim of the moustache today, nothing drastic. We hear about the paintings. Oh, yes. George! How are you, my boy? I said, how are you? Permission to speak. Absolutely top holes are with a yin and a yang and a yippity do. And your Uncle Betty sends his regards. I told them you could have a week off in April. Don't want you missing the boat raids, do we? Permission to speak? Oh, certainly not. Permission to sing boisterously, sir. If you must. Hours are down, ears and life a scream. <laughs> University education, you can't beat it. Can you? Now, what have we here? Name? Permission to speak? All drink, sir. Go oh, telly ho, yibbity dap and zing zang spill it. Looking forward to bullying off for the final chucker? <laughs> Permission to speak? <laughs> Answer the general, Baldrick. I can't him, sir. I don't know what he's talking about. Are you looking forward to the big push? No, sir. I'm absolutely terrified. <laughs> oh, God, I love it. Uh, I love who plays him. Yeah. A great actor, man. So village idiot very well yeah that last part is just, i'm terrified <laughs> like yeah the healthy humor of the honest tommy <laughs> don't worry my boy if you should falter remember that captain darling and i are behind you 
About 35 miles behind. Right, well, stand by your bed. Let's have a look at this artist of yours, Blackadder. Next to me, darling. Thank you, sir. Have you found someone? Yes, sir. I think I have. None other than young George here. Oh, bravo. Well, let's have a shift, then. It's simply called War. Damn silly title, George. Looks more like a couple of socks and a stick of pineapple to me. Permission to speak, sir. Oh, it's actually the if what happens when you think like what happens when you're <laughs> drenched in phlegm? What we're looking for at all, is it, darling? No, sir. No, sir! There is. This, sir, it's Private Baldrick's. He's called it My Family and Other Animals. Oh, good Lord, no. Well, I'm afraid that's about it, sir. Apart from this little thing. Uh... Ah, that's more like it! It was me. Really quite urgent. Damn and highs, will you stop interrupting, George? No, oh, this is excellent. Congratulations, man. Oh, totally inspiring. Makes you wonder. Jump over the top and yell, ya boo sucks to you, Fritzy. What? Are you sure you did this, Blackadder? Of course, I'm sure. I'm afraid I don't believe you. How dare you, darling? Can't let that slur pass. What possible low, suspicious, slanderous reason could this? Office boy, have for thinking that I didn't paint the picture. Well, three reasons, as a matter of fact. Firstly, you're in it. It's a self-portrait. <laughs> Secondly, you told us you couldn't paint. Well, one doesn't like to blow one's own trumpet. Permission denied. And thirdly, it's signed George. Well spotted. But not signed George. Dedicated to George. King George. Gentlemen, the king. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no hesitation in appointing you our official regimental artist. You're a damn fine chap. Not a pin pushing, desk sucking blotter jotter like Darling here. <laughs> Evacuate here immediately. Get that permission to jolly well speak right now, sir. Otherwise, I might just burst like a bunny balloon. Later, George. Much later. Congratulations on your new appointment, Blackadder. Thank you, sir. And may I say, Blackadder, I am particularly pleased about it. Are you? Oh, yes. I'm gonna make a prediction. Darling calling out Blackadder for not painting that picture. Oh yeah, so I'm interested in their relationship season. Yeah. So he more of the smelches. Yeah. Rather than the brown nose from season two. Right, right. For dynamic this season. <laughs> War artist, we can give you the full briefing. The fact is, Blackadder, that the King and Country cover story was just a cover story. We want you, as our top painting board, to leave the trenches tonight. Suits me. And go out into no man's land. Uh-oh. Yes. Of Paris. No. To come back with accurate drawings of the enemy position. Of me to sit in no man's land painting pictures of the Germans. Thank you. Good man. Well, it's a very attractive proposition, gentlemen, but unfortunately not practical. You see, my medium is light. It'll be pitch dark. I won't be able to see a thing. That is a point. I tell you what, we'll send up a couple of flares. They'll be lit up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Glad I checked. All right, total and utter quiet. You understand? So, for instance, if any of us crawl over any barbed wire, they must on no account go, ah! Have you pulled over some barbed wire? I've just put my elbow in a blob of ice cream. That's <laughs> oh, all right. Now, where the hell are we? Well, it's a bit difficult to say. We appear to have crawled into an area marked with mushrooms. What do those symbols denote? We're in a field of mushrooms? Lieutenant, <laughs> that is a military map. It is unlikely to list interesting flora and fungi. <laughs> the key, and you'll discover that those mushrooms aren't for picking. Good Lord, you're quite right, sir. It says mine. So these mushrooms must belong to the man who made the map. <laughs> or we're in the middle of a mine field. Oh, my oh. God. No wonder Blackadder is so <laughs> sarcastic. He's surrounded oh, by idiots! I love that. Do you say they're his? You mean mine? Mine. Like, obviously, they're his. Like, or just the Saints person that would stare at an orange juice container. You know why? Because it says concentrate. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's a good one. Oh dear. So, he owns the field as well. Yes, the Lieutenant. If they hit me, you'll be sure to point it out, won't you? Come on, clear drawing and let's get out of here. Well, surely we ought to wait for the flares, sir. You see, my medium is light. Look, and I just use your imagination, for heaven's sake. Wait a minute. That's the answer. What? I can't believe I've been so stupid. 
You know, Jukus usually on the stupid one. Furnished in the brain department. <laughs> yes, well, on this occasion, I've been stupid as the ball. Oh, now, sir, I will not have that. Baldrick and I will always be more stupid than you. Isn't that right, Baldrick? Stupid, stupid, stupid. Yeah. Stupid, he's the stupidity does. <laughs> yep. For an obvious point, this. We'll go straight back to the dugout and do the painting from there. You do the most imaginative, most exciting possible drawing of German defenses from your imagination. Oh, I see. Now that is a challenge. Well, quite. Come on, let, let's get over here. Oh, sir, just one thing. If we should happen to tread on a mine, what do we do? Well, normal procedure, Lieutenant, is to jump 200 feet into the air <laughs> and scatter yourself over a wide area. Are you sure oh. this is... I love that. Uh, Britain's finest. Oh, going God. to war. What do we do if we step on a mine? Well... Usually you jump in the air 200 feet and then just explode. I love <laughs> that procedure. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. This is what you saw, Blackadder. Absolutely. I mean, there have been a few more factories and not quite as many elephants, but... <laughs> you know what this means? If it's true, sir, we'll have to cancel the push. Exactly. Damn. What a nuisance. <laughs> exactly what the enemy would expect us to oh. do and therefore exactly what we shan't do. Ah, now we attack where the lull is strongest, then Fritz will think that our reconnaissance is a total shambles. This will lull him into a sense of false security, and then next week we can attack where the lion is actually badly defended and win the greatest victory since the Winchester flower arranging team beat Harrow 12 saw bottoms to one. Tell me, have you ever visited the planet Earth, sir? <laughs> Fighting trousers on, Blackadder. Permission to shout bravo at an annoyingly loud volume, sir. Permission granted. Bravo! That's the spirit. Just your kind of caper, eh, Blackadder? Oh, yes. Good luck against those elephants. Get a chisel and some marble, will you, Baldrick? Oh, you're taking up sculpture now, sir. No, I thought I'd get my headstone done. <laughs> what are you going to put on it? Here lies Edmund Blackadder, and he's bloody annoyed. Are we going over, are we, sir? Yes, we are. Unless I can think of some brilliant plan. Would you like some rat o van to help you think? <laughs> rat o van. Yeah, it's rat that's been run rat over by a van. van. Although, it gives me an idea. Telephone, please. I suppose Blackadder and his boys will have gone over the top by now. Yes, God, I wish I was out there with them, dodging the bullets instead of having to sit here drinking this Chateau Lafitte and eating these... Filet mignon with bernaise. <laughs> My thoughts exactly, sir. Damn this Chateau Lafitte. He's a very brave man, Blackadder. And of course, that lieutenant of his, George. Cambridge man, you know. Bertie and I used to our college. What? Hey, um... Break win? That me? Might they have a farting contest? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Wouldn't put it past them. Mm -mm. Those smart people, man. Yeah. They do weird shit. Yeah, yeah, you gotta get all the ideas out. And if yep. you keep holding them in, they go up to your head, and, and out that's your where mouth. the shitty ideas come from. And out your mouth. Right, God. exactly. Yep. This sauce bad is. Yes. And to be quite frank, these, these are a little, well. What on earth wrong with our cook? Well, it's a rather strange story. No? Tell, tell. I received a phone call from Pope Gregory the Ninth <laughs> that our cook been selected for the England cricket team and must set sail for the West Indies immediately. Really? Barely a moment later, the phone rang again. It was a trio of wandering Italian chefs who happened to be in the area offering their services. <laughs> so I had the quartermaster take them on at once. Huh? Huh? Sure, are these are reasons enough. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm sure they are, sir. Everything will be all right once the cream custard arrives. Oh, oh no. Chef will miss the push. Oh, damn, so we have. One thing puzzles me, Baldrick. So much <coughs> custard out of such a small cup. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I hope, I think that's the the whole scene might be their, their title and their identification name. There you go. <laughs> Rank, social, and name. There you go. It's funny. Very military. Very funny. Appreciate it. So, for this two thumbs up, Obviously, I think this is going to be the best one yet. I think so, too. I don't think we're going to have to dig as deep into our minds. Right. To make this humor, and it's more current. Exactly. More mm -hmm. fresh than the, the other two the series. The other two series. I, I would have to agree. Yeah, Thanks definitely. for your patronage, y'all. Yeah. Your hands, scrub your toes, wipe your ass, blow your nose, and brace the suck. Unplug and do something epic. See you next time. Later. Fellas, we could be that mistake. Let's do this.